Well, good afternoon, August 11th, 2023, and we are podcast six or seven. So we're we're getting them going, we're getting some consistency, and it's fun. But uh, yeah, Friday afternoon here in August, we've got a little market recap going. That's kind of been our theme the past two weeks or so, and we're going to keep it up. We'll just go through some slides we've got printed out here. So Bill, what have you seen going on for our, our news update this week that you want to start us off with? Well, this is kind of a 2023 mid-year analysis of what's gone on comparable to history. I mean, the good news is housing is normalizing after two unprecedented unicorn years. New listings are still declining. Affordability remains the primary challenge. And the outlook is new construction is growing, offering more options for buyers and sellers. Expect a moderately active summer season, which is where we are right now. And that's probably pretty accurate. So here's an interesting stat that we've got in front of us. The average credit score for home buyers is actually pretty high right now. Did you anticipate that this is what it would be? No, because we we see people across the spectrum, but uh, this is from the New York Fed from the first quarter of 23, that the average credit score is 765 for those people taking out a mortgage. So that tells you it's pretty competitive out there and uh, people are doing everything to keep their credit in great shape. So that's one thing to check with your lender on. You know, that's why you do everything in advance. Um, so if you need to help improve your credit score, you got options with your lender to do that. And make sure you know where your credit <clears throat> is today. It's a vital importance of everything that we do. Well, and let's give some context on that because <clears throat> typically in, in my history over a decade doing this, over 740, you have the best pricing and the best terms would be available for you. 765 is incredible, but you can get a mortgage with way a much, much, much lower credit score. Uh, you're you'll have different terms available due to credit and uh, down payment, and all those things. But 765 might be an average right now, which is, would probably be a national historical high, I would imagine. Um, but I believe credit scores, you can go down to 620, uh, sometimes lower than that, but just kind of for, for a ballpark, 620, 640. So that's that's pretty amazing in my, in my mind. I think what it spells out too is this market's so competitive right now. So people in this position have better opportunity to acquire these homes, you know, and but it's it's like never give up. Always plan for the future and get in there and get things put together in advance so you're ready to go when you're ready to go after buying a home. Cruising through our little slide deck here, I think this one might be a little ridiculous, but mortgage rates heavily influence the direction of home sales. So obviously if rates are up, less people are going to be buying a home, but we could kind of take something away from that. So when rates are up, yes, affordability is down, but so is competition. So if you're still able to qualify and make a move, you might have an easier time doing it, even though you might grimace a little bit on your on, on some of the rates out there. But I think that would be my takeaway is let's look for the positive here. Hey, I could still, I could still qualify. I got an opportunity now not to have so many offer or you know, so many offers against the same listing. Uh, that's true. You know, that, that comes from the National Association of Realtors. So they're very aware of what's going on and how the market. The trends are now. This is a national perspective. This isn't in our little county or that type of thing. It's nationally what's going on. So you got to take that with a grain of salt of how things are going on in our neck of the woods. Existing home sale distribution percent by price bracket. Let's just show this here. Okay, so let's break this down. So the majority of home sales, forty-five percent, are in the two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars price bracket. And this is this is national, right? That's national. And that tells you where, I mean, obviously our prices may be higher here than they might be in Kentucky or something like that. But it tells you where the bulk of the activity is. It's from a quarter million to a half million dollars, which when you see homes like that on the market, they tend to disappear quickly. And then you go up to 500 to 750K, it's down to 18% of the market. And above that, you know, is about 13% of the entire market, you know, from a million, 750 plus. So that's a much smaller number than what you might perceive. So the big number is that that middle range, and that's where the competition is. But you want to make sure you're qualified to fit in those markets too. Okay, so uh, available inventory strongly impacts home sales, obviously. Okay, well, how many boxes on the shelf determines how many boxes people buy? So we might have to evaluate where we're getting these slides. Chief economist from the National Association of Realtors. I mean, these are facts. And it, it, I mean, that's what we work and live within, you know, and it tells you that these numbers are down, inventory's down from the great 
you know, half of what it was in 2019. That's a huge differential. So just, just making people aware of what's going on in the market and why you see things like this, it's not business as usual. And uh, just being prepared for that and aware of it. That's just basically have the knowledge so you're ready to go. Well, and I guess also for me, read the whole sentence because this first part is the no-brainer, available inventory impacts home sales. But this no, the second part isn't so common knowledge. The inventory is half of what it was two years ago, three, four years, four years ago. ago. Yeah. Wow, time is flying. Here's a chart we'll show again. This is, I just did a video about how to determine how many months of inventory are available in your market. Here's a chart showing from 2011 to today. And you can just see, you know, declining trend there. What do you have to say about that? Well, it tells you the average from 2011 to 2019, there was always, the average was a five month inventory. So, you know, it's above that and below that. In 2023, it's three months. So it's a substantial differential, you know, where we don't have an average now. It's 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 below that. And so that's why we're dealing with inventory issues and which is affecting everything out there too. And we learned in my video that if you have less than six months of supply, you've got a seller's market. So that's what we're dealing with here. Obviously, we've got half of half of that metric. So okay. Yeah. Uh, you want to get this one? Yeah, the final week of June. We noted that inventory actually declined on a year-over-year -year basis for the first time since last April. The substantial slowdown was primarily driven by fewer potential sellers opting to list their home. And the market, which lapped the period of high, higher inventory growth that started in May of 2022. That's from Realtor.com. So I think the one, there's another part I think that relates to that is, and here it is from Tom Barkin, who's president of the Federal Reserve in Richmond, Virginia. He didn't fully anticipate how much the move in interest rates would convince people not to put their houses on the market. There's a great reason why we're seeing the redu reduced inventory. Because a lot of people are saying, hey, I'm going to stay here. It's affordable. And all the homes we anticipated to be out here with the baby boomers and what moving on and scaling down, not quite happening because it's more affordable where they are versus more expensive to make a transition. And so um, that's affected our market. Again, this is just information to be armed with so you know why things are happening in the market and and when you're out there shopping. Yeah, the low interest rates are great, but once people have them, they don't want to give them up. Yeah, that's it's great because a lot of people get into homes and they're affordable and that's the key thing is is getting into a home and, and able to stay in that home. Okay, so history has shown higher rates may take the steam out of rising prices, but it doesn't cause them to collapse entirely. This is especially true in today's housing market, where the demand for homes continues to outpace supply, keeping the pressure on house prices. Again, there's your inventory issue. With even with higher interest rates, the demand is up there because people still want a home. And that demand is what's keeping sales prices up. You know, everybody thought when we saw these rates go up, we'd see this big reduction in sales prices. Um, no, if your home's in great shape out there, more than one person wants it, it's and people can still qualify, that's the key. And so they don't hang around very long and that keeps those prices strong, especially in our neck of the woods. Nationally speaking, that would hold true for some markets, some markets are weaker than others. But in our market in the Northwest, we're seeing that stability. New residential starts jumped 22% in May. So new residential starts are builders building new homes, just starting, right? New, new construction. Self. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And again, this so is, this is this nationally. Chart. Yeah, it's nationally. So that means, we're seeing that um, that hasn't happened for a while because builders have not jumped in, you know, due to land availability, the time to get permits approved, et cetera, et cetera. But to see an increase in that is is great because that, again, adds to your inventory. And, um, you know, and you'll see a lot of builder projects are, you know, sold out as they get going because of the limited inventory out there. But that's also a good a good thing to see things happening. So hopefully at some point in time, we'll see a more equalization of inventory to buyer activity. So things level back out. But um, right now, those are still challenges out there. So I think what all this stuff boils down to is, is kind of be aware of what's going on in the marketplace. Um, so you, 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 know, you understand these things. So if your agents talk to you to say, hey, look, we've got to offer this, we've got to do that. Unfortunately, you lose a house or two in that process of not believing that's really the case out there. And we've witnessed it, we've seen it, 
And so when you get to that third or fourth house, you're willing to make the necessary adjustments you need to make to, to get that home. Um, so be prepared, be armed with the information and talk to your agents about these details when you go out shopping so you know what to be prepared for and have all your ducks in a row. Have your credit lined up, have your pre-approvals done. I mean, solid, underwritten, ready to roll and watch those rates daily because they're moving daily. Um, and so make sure that everything's there so you, you stay in that affordable range and the qualification range that you started out going after. Well, and I can touch on the listen to your realtor comment because my realtor, uh, when we bought my place a couple of years ago, she said, hey, you need to make this earnest money and do this type of offer. And I said, okay, yes, 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 but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a different earnest money than what you suggest. And I said that two offers in a row. And then the third offer, I did exactly what she said and we got the house. So, you know, <clears throat> anecdotal experience, but uh, take that for what it's worth. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. Agents are skilled at doing these things. They've been, most of them have been in the market through 2019, 20, 21, 22. Now in 23, it's a different market, but they're, they've witnessed it. They're part of it and they see what's going on. So their knowledge is key in your marketplace. So get to know your agent and find out their knowledge of the market, what's going on, because that'll be a, a great help to you in getting into a home and knowing how to do it. Because they know all the little idiosyncrasies on how much earnest money. Do I make it non-refundable? What's going to make my offer more attractive? That's where we have some products with a Security Plus gives you a, a seller guarantee. Hey, I'll close on time or you get $5,000. That carries a little clout with your offer. And other things to help eliminate contingencies if you have a home to sell. So we've got some great products. So if you have time, you know, give us a call, shoot us an email. We'd love to walk through those details with you so you're prepared to compete in this marketplace. And we were reading some news articles this morning, actually, that one of our teammates sent out and, uh, you know, market leader, thought leader, and said, hey, check out this outlook from some top economists on what they think is going to be happening in rates and potential recession fears. And it doesn't, whether those articles and headlines are right or wrong, it doesn't really look like we see a clear path forward yet. There still is kind of some um, conflicting ideas and thoughts out there. So we're going to have to ride the storm and just keep doing weekly check-ins and see see where things end up. Well, those articles are optimistic. I have to say that's good. And I think you got to maintain that attitude because you got to look for the good things that are happening out there. Um, but we they have to happen. And so as we go through these inflationary concerns, everything's happened this week and uh, the treasury auctions, you know, so... Um, each week brings a new set of information and challenges. And so stay in touch with your, your agents out there, your lenders. Uh, get, um, get in there so you know you got all the info right in front of you and you're ready to move when it's, when it's time to do it. All right. Well, if you guys want any more informa information, leave a comment below. You can message us, get a hold of us uh, with links in the description. So we'll see you on the next one. All right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday.